What were your first impressions of the one knowing Jose Mourinho? Uh, you know, I met Jose uh, before that um, because he's from Setúbal. Uh, his father at that time, he, he was working for the club, so I knew his, uh, his dad at that time. Uh, fantastic person as well, always nice with me. Uh, and then I remember like um, I met him, I think was when he left Benfica, when he came from Barcelona to start coaching Benfica and then, and then he left Benfica. Uh, like uh, in, in December, mm. uh, and then I think that second half of the of the league, um, which he didn't coach, he just wait until the end of the season, then maybe to to go to another club. He was watching some some our game home games. Uh, in one day, you know, like uh, we had a double session because with Jesus we had I think it was a Friday like a, a normal morning session, and then in the afternoon. Uh, we had like a big meeting, a little bit like to talk about the opposition, and then uh, end up with uh, with massage or, or whatever. If you want to go to the sauna or steam room or something, and that's it. So in between that uh, those sessions, so we had the morning session. We went for lunch with some players, um, and then on the way back to the stadium, we park, and then Jose was there talking with his uh, with his father at the time. So. And then, so we came, I, I stayed behind, and, and um, so I shook, you know, like um, Joseph's dad hand first, and then, and then I shook his hand, and then as I was shooking his hand, his hand, it just said, you know, Paul, you need to, you need to move, you can't stay here. Mm. And I said, yeah, I'll try, I'm giving my best, and, and that's it. That was the, you know, like the, the only words he, he kind of gave to me, and, and then we finished that season, and um, no, and then he yeah finished that season. He went to Lidia. Um, uh, that was the year, the season that we got promoted. So it was when I met him. And then I played against him when he was in Lidia. So we played Lidia. He was in Lidia at that time, and uh, and I had a teammate that um, that we played together in uh, Estoril, in the youth, and we got we signed professional contract together mm. at that time. And uh, obviously, when I left to, to move to, to Setuel, he stayed, he renewed contract, so he stayed in, in Estoril another season. So then when I got promoted with Estoril, was when he left uh, with, with Setuel, then he left Estoril to, to join uh, Lydia, so then we kind of play in, in, okay. yeah, in the top division. Um, and then, uh, you know, like, uh, I remember we played at home, we drew the game, very quickly just, uh, you know, say we swapped shirts and we told, you know, like, hey, have a shower, have a quick shower, you know, for us like to talk a little bit because we're not seeing each other for a long time. Yeah. Uh, just before you go back to Lydia, so you know, let's talk a little bit, and that's it. Yeah, we had a quick uh, shower, um, and, and as we start talking, he was just saying that you know, like, uh, listen, Paul, you know, like, uh, oh, you know, Jose loves you, and I say, what do you mean? You know, in a team meeting, uh, he was just talking a lot about you, and you have to be careful with that side. We have to be careful with Paul with this and blah blah blah. And I say, okay, it's nice to you know, nice mm. to hear, and that's it. And then in January, he signed for Porto, Jose. You know, staying uh, in Setuba. Um, and then in the end of that season was when I when I moved to to Porto. Yeah. But we had a teammate that his name Fernando Mendes. He played in all like top, like the top five clubs in in Portugal. Uh, and he played for Porto as well. And I remember just uh, uh, before the end of the season, he, he started kind of, listen, Porto are here, Porto they are watching you, Porto this, Porto that. And I said, listen, you know, just, just leave me, don't say anything. Yeah. I prefer because otherwise, knowing that someone is there like watching you, or I prefer not to know, you know, just I want to play, just relax, whatever. You know, so listen, I'm talking with them and blah, 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 and whatever. So then uh, in the end of, uh, of that season, I went there. But just few games before the, the end of the season when I received the call from the, the president oh. and I went I don't know if, if it was because of Jose uh, or Porto they were already watching you know like and just waiting for the for the right moment maybe to sign me but uh, but in the end of that season I went to, to Porto and uh, yeah and start uh, Amazing. playing under him yeah. under Jose yeah. with Jose uh, his late father was Felix right was that his name yes Felix he was a goalkeeper yeah he was yeah. How how good a player is Jose though? You would have seen him. I saw him playing in the charity match in goal. Uh, yeah, I think he played like in low division. I think, but 
but I think then later he just decided to <laughs> go for studies, yeah. I think, I think it's safe yeah. to say that worked out. That decision definitely paid off. Um, what yeah. is it about him that makes him so good at what he does? He's, he's been a winner everywhere he's gone, except Tottenham, although he did take yeah. them to a cup final and then he yeah. left the club. No, he's a winner, you know, but his, like his anger, his you know, desire, he wants to win. Um, I think it's that passion that he, that he has. And I remember being at Porto and he was a quite young manager at that time and, uh, and you could see how much he, he wanted to win and wanted to succeed and uh, it made me move abroad like, like, like it happened to go to, to a different level, to coach you know, like a, another top club. Uh, but we could see that, you know, the way he was motivating players, the way he was pushing everyone. Mm. How clever he was, like to sometimes to touch you. He knew how to touch players. He knew all, all players' characters. Um, he knew how. Maybe some he has to be a bit harder, others on a different way, or or even touch someone big in a in a dressing room for all the others can't feel of. Oh, we have to be careful. Or he was so clever on that, uh, and that's you know obviously. Then with the with the training sessions as well, you know, the organization uh, was unbelievable. Stop. A lot of the stuff <clears> he says to the media becomes headline grabbing. Of course, he's Jose Mourinho, but how much of it is actually him saying what he means, as opposed to just taking attention away yeah. from the players and putting it on himself? Yeah. Because he's more than happy to do that. No, he loved that. Uh, <laughs> he loved that, and um, but in one way, uh, he brought most of the attention on him and um, but as a player we knew that uh, we had kind of go to a fight you know go for him you know mm. I, you know go with them go and uh, because of sometimes he was bringing all that attentions and uh, and make us feel that we need to go with them you know we need to fight for him we need to you know, so that's that was the the things that he he knew how to talk with media and uh, and get all that attention uh, and you know just to leave that pressure you know just for him and, and not the players yeah. the players to kind of think about playing and think about the game and that's it but but we knew when he was saying something touching someone or from the opposition or this that we need to go with him. You ever think, wow, you're crazy, boss? Because you know you hear these things like he went into the the carrier, the the laundry bag thing, and he yeah. got pushed in. I mean, when you see a manager doing that, you're thinking, well, you you're a little bit mad. No, he does what he has to do, like to to win the game and be with the players. Uh, that one was quite, uh, you know, I, I knew the story, obviously. Um, I, I would for sure like tell until that came out. Um, but he, he did what he had to do, like to to be there and, and win that game. He yeah. said he couldn't even breathe in there. No. Like he could have passed out. You know, yeah. it's. Um... I know those boxes, and uh, <laughs> and I understand what uh, what he says. Uh, but you know, like uh, it was a really important game against a top a top team as well, and uh, and he did what he what he had to, mm. you know, just to be there and uh, and to leave the message to to the players because it's different. Go through someone else, um, and uh, and it works. Yeah. So that's that's the the most important. <laughs> Did you watch the Tottenham All or Nothing documentary uh, with Jose? Yes. When you're watching that, you're thinking, oh, yes, he, that that's what he's like, or is he conscious that there's cameras there? And no, it is. It is in some way. Yes, obviously, probably other stuff they they didn't show or they or they were not allowed or because you know you can't give out everything but uh, but for example those meetings with the players yes you know he says what he what he has to say to the to a player you know he brings anyone and uh, and tells you uh, he's not someone that will go behind mm. uh, tell things behind the players or whatever when he has to say something he will tell you whatever will be individually or, or in front of the group it's the way it is uh, and you need to take it um, but it's him, yeah. They Definitely, always, yeah. Oh, every player I've spoken to says what they value most from a manager is honesty. And there's a lot of managers yeah. out there who are not honest. Yeah. So I guess that's one of his strongest, mm -hmm. yes, yes. strongest attributes, right? Yes. His honesty to you. 
Yes. No, it was with me, with anyone. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter who, the name. We will be with, with anyone. Obviously, in my opinion, you know, like this new generation is totally different. You know, the way they grow and uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not used to to have a manager that are a little bit more uh, hard with you. And uh, and when that happened, they might think that he doesn't like you or something. Um, and it's not the case, you know. Like I had, for example, it was hard with me. I had George Jesus. He was another one as a young boy. Sometimes I was going home and uh, waking up next day and I say, oh, here I go again, you know, until uh, I realized that he really liked me because I was playing all the time. Mm. But he was always, uh, I was missing a pass, he was shouting with me, I was doing this, he was shouting. And then I, I start realizing that uh, he wanted me to do well uh, because he could see potential. And he told me later as well, he called me, you know, like uh, once, uh, just to tell me that, that as a winger I would be a player to play in second division, second B division. But as a fullback I could be one of the best in Europe and even in the world. Um, uh, and people they might thought that he was crazy or whatever, and even myself when I left the room. Uh, but, uh, but then on my first season at Porto I was uh, voted as you know, the best mm. right back in, uh, in Europe. So, and then you look back and say, Actually, wasn't uh, that crazy. No, uh, but but it was hard on me. Uh, and some players, they you know now, they they think that uh, if the manager are hard with you, it's because he doesn't like you, and, and it's not the case. It's because he wants you to do well, um, and that's it. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Do you enjoy your managers being? Yeah. Is that how you get motivated? Because everyone's different. Some people, like yeah. you said, Mourinho knew yeah. how some players would react to this. How others is that? Yeah. Is that how to get the best out of Paolo? Yeah, sometimes yes. Yeah, there were some games that you you felt that you were kind kind of not not there in terms of you look like you were sleeping. Mm. You know what I mean. And sometimes you need someone to shake you, to wake you up, and uh, and then you oh let's go. Um, and the, and it, and it was like that. Sometimes at half time, just give you in front of the group. You know, just kind of uh, give you like for you to wake up. Um, I had at Porto, for example, uh, and this was a good example, Josh Costa, for, that he was playing on my side, you know, uh, as a captain, a leader, pff, he was always, you know, like kind of on my on my toe. Yeah. Uh, always, you know, like uh, Paulo, wake up! Uh, it's already half an hour, and then you're still uh, you're still sleeping. Come on, and so it and, and keeps you because you knew with them you couldn't yeah. sleep. You had to be always on. Uh, and, and it was really important for me as well, as a young player, uh, to have these kind of players to, to keep pushing you. Uh, pushing you in a good way, you know, and sometimes even a swear word just, you know, it wasn't like to send you down, but mm. to, to push you. Energize you almost. And, uh, and it helped me a lot, so, and, and sometimes it's important, you know, to, to have that from a manager, from a teammate, uh, in a good way to, you know, it's for, for the best of you and, and, and for the team as well.